to show you how to connect to the web interface for an SPS 855. Second, we're going to show you how to change the unit name or identity so it's easier to recognize when connecting in SES 900. Third, we're going to show you how to update the receiver options. Fourth, we're going to show you how to check the receiver's warranty expiration date. And that's going to help you on our last step, which is going to be updating the receiver software version. So the equipment that you're going to need to be able to do this is, of course, the receiver. And then you're going to need just your standard multi-port adapter that you use for charging the unit and your charger. And the reason I use the charger is just so when you're doing a software update, you don't run any risk of losing battery or losing power. And then you're going to need an Ethernet cable. Um, this one that I have here comes in the kit with the unit, but any Ethernet cable will work. So what you're going to do is just plug this in to uh, your Ethernet port on the back of the unit. And then you'll plug the other end into the back of your computer. And if you look on the faceplate, you'll see that before we had all zeros for the IP address and then now we've got an IP address. So when you connect, the, your computer actually sets the IP address for the unit. Okay, so I've got my web browser pulled up now. So I'm just going to type in the 169.254.1.0 and hit enter. So that brings up the web interface. Next it's going to ask you to log in. The username is admin and the password is password, all lowercase. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go through and change the identity. So we want to be able to easily recognize this unit when we connect it uh, with our TSC3 and SCS900. So when we scan for devices, this is the current name that's going to show up. So it's just going to show the unit serial number and then Tremble. So I want to change that. And again, this is one of my rental units, so I'm going to change it to my rental kit name which is R-SPS-B39 and it's a base so I'm going to change that to base on the end so that way it's easily recognizable as a base when I scan for devices so I'm going to hit OK and it's uh, going to tell me it's going to reboot the unit so I'm just going to say OK alright and then the next thing I want to do is go to my receiver options and so from here I can see all my options on the receiver. Uh, I can see my precision. I've got a base code on it. So I've got RTK and then just some other information uh, about the unit options. Now if we wanted to add additional options like say a data logging code or a precise rover code, um, you would get the option code and go to this option code box here and that's where you would paste that code and then uh, click install option and that would install that option for you. So the next thing we want to look at is our firmware warranty date. So you can see up at the top of the screen here, firmware warranty date is January 1st of 2019. So I can effectively install any software that comes out before January 1st of 2019. So on my unit now, if I go to firmware, You can see here I've got version 512 installed currently. And that's pretty old, so I want to try and get this up to a newer version. So what I want to do now is choose a more current firmware version. So I'm going to go to choose file. my TIMG file. So you see here these are all TIMGs. That's what the web interface uses for software versions. And in your release notes for your uh, firmware versions, you'll have the warranty expiration date. So one thing that I've done just to make it a little easier is at the end of the version I've put the warranty expiration date. So for version 532 
I have to have an expiration date past June of 2017. Um, but I'm not going to go up to 532 because you have to have a more current version of SCS 900. And this being a rental unit, most customers still have older versions of SCS 900. So I'm going to upgrade to 522. So I'm going to select that version and click open. And then now I'm just going to click uh, install new firmware. And it's going to give me a warning, so I'm just going to say okay. And so now it's going through and installing this fail safe copy of the firmware. And we're just going to let this run and complete the install. All right, and so the unit has rebooted. So if I go back to firmware, I can see I now have version 5.22. So that's how you configure an SPS 855. So for this tutorial, we went through how to configure an SPS 855. We showed you first how to connect to the web interface for an SPS 855. We showed you how to change the unit name or identity so that it's easier to recognize an SCS 900. We showed you how to update the receiver options, how to check the receiver's warranty expiration date, and last we showed you how to update the software version. So I hope this tutorial was helpful for you, and thanks for watching.